Hello folks, this is Glenn Guy over at the Arcanum and I just wanted to touch on a subject that underpins my own approach to photography and I call it making something out of nothing. So here we are in rural Iceland. This is a, a farm uh, with a basically a adjoining church and it got some lovely historical buildings and so it's open to tourists and the farmer or the farmer's wife, if they're available, will come out and give you a quick tour of the property. Uh, it's quite small, you don't get to see so much, but what's there is interesting and potentially interesting fodder for the photographer. So all of these images I'm showing uh, are unfinished, they're work in progress, but you know, I guess they're a fair way down the track. And I wanted to really illustrate to you the process I would take to make photographs often. The photograph in this case is about the subject matter, these lovely textured facades on the, the buildings and then the uh, roof covered in grass for you know its insulation properties. So that's kind of interesting. And uh, the image is predominantly green, and we've got a slight bit of coolness creeping into the, uh, the cloudy sky as a storm's approaching. The light was actually pretty gooey throughout my process here. So I've had to do a little bit of work on the computer to bring some luminosity back into the image. So that's the first shot and you know I've taken it from a, an angle to add a sense of um, three-dimensionality. You can clearly follow the path visually through the frame but also the roof line. And I think that's just one little trick to give a, a sense of space and depth. Move around to the side and use that diagonal line to um, bring the viewer through the frame. So after this first image I just moved over to the right hand side a little bit and photographed the church in relation to the buildings um, and so you know I've um, uh, trying to fit more in uh, a wider angle of view and I went for black and white here because the tonality and textual qualities are quite strong but you know again it's not finished there are some uh, it's still a bit murky in the grass so I need to do a bit of work there but you get to see the 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 work in progress I suppose there's some other issues because there's a flagpole right in front of the church and that would bother some people but you know I think this actually has got quite a bit of potential I think it's a far more uh, interesting image than the first one the first one told a story and the color of the grass I guess was good but I think photographically the the, the richness of this image is much stronger and then here's a close-up of a, a little area in between those buildings on the left and because it's full of texture um, I chose black and white not a great shot, but the uh, the process you see I'm going through here is I'm, I'm working towards trying to make a good photograph. So back over to the church and you can see I've got rid of the uh, flagpole. I've also photographed from uh, an angle so as to show both the front and side of the church to add that sense of three-dimensional space. Now, a few tricks with this image because... Um, I had to tilt the camera up and so therefore the building tilted and I used lens correction in Lightroom to overcome the tilt. Now this shot goes back a few years so um, it was um, possibly the first time I used a lens correction and as a consequence it cropped off a little bit more of the image than what I would have liked. So I actually like that little cross on the bottom right hand corner but I suppose it would have been nice to have had just a little bit more space at the bottom and also on the sides because normally you would want to have the subject in this case the church looking into space but it's actually not the um, the 1875 date the doorway the front window if you consider that elements in a face <laughs> Um, well, normally you'd, you'd push those over a little bit to the right as you look at the picture because it's just more positive, you know, if you're looking into space. But actually, like this, the, it, there's a bit, bit of tension in the image. So at this stage, I haven't um, explored cropping it, though I could, of course. Let's have a look. So we um, there's lots of ways to do it, but just to start with, I'm just going to drag down a corner. Now, and, you know, well, it might actually work as a square. That's interesting. Um, but you can see there that uh, now the, the building is effectively looking into space and generally with people, um, that would give you a more positive outcome to the image. As opposed to the reverse, 
which would be that, you know, crowded, no place to go. So if you wanted to photograph someone in a detention centre, then this might be the approach you took to express a particular viewpoint. I then went behind the church, and this is a very straightforward documentary photograph, and yeah, I like cemeteries, I'm interested in cemeteries, I've produced a very substantial book on photographing cemeteries. In this case, this is a pretty straightforward photograph, and all I've done to try to make it a little bit interesting, a little bit more dynamic, is to use a wide-angle lens up close. And that's the key with wide angle because when you zoom out to the wide angle focal length, it will make your subject look further away and therefore smaller, arguably less important. So I needed to place emphasis on the gravestones in the foreground to make them as important as the church in the background. So a wide angle lens, moving in close. If you move in close, you'll get a narrower angle of view so you won't fit as much in the image left, right, top, bottom. That's why you use the wide angle, to bring back that wide angle of view. But it's the moving in close that makes the foreground subjects larger than life. That's the secret. You'll notice the, um, the buildings that we photographed earlier on the right-hand side of the image. So different coloured grass on uh, that side. Just opposite those buildings was this nice little stream. And uh, again, work in progress. I'm exploring some a sort of a glow effect here. It's probably a little strong. And I'm, I'm thinking about various ways to play with that. Rather than reducing the glow, I might actually just select the blacks and punch those up a little bit more. You know, so it's kind of like a local contrast adjustment. There's a few things I'm thinking of. I'm not happy with the sky. It's too flat. Um, there should be contrast in it, but it's just, yeah, there's the... It's it's lost its luminosity, so we really want the darker clouds to be darker, and then worry about the brighter clouds after that. So just moving along a couple meters, it's quite a different image and uh, processed in a different way. So you know, folks would prefer one or the other. I guess I prefer the sky in this, although it's again not right. I like the the contrast in the grasses but I prefer the glow here and possibly the warmer tone. So what I'd be looking at is achieving a mixture between the two photos. So it's, it's a good process to undertake on the computer where you have two similar photographs and you process them in different ways so as to give you a recipe to apply to the third image, if you like. If you've only got one photograph, you use a program like Lightroom and um, make virtual copies of the original file. And that gives you chocolate, strawberry, vanilla variations and you choose the one that suits you best or mix them together and get an interesting flavour. Now, just a little bit along, walking 10 metres to the left, I saw this. And um, so instead of working with wide angle like I had been doing, this time I decided to go for um, a telephoto lens. So you can see up on the top left-hand corner, the basic information, 60 for a second, an aperture of 8, 400 ISO, and it's a 70 to 200 f4 image stabilized lens. This is a Canon um, kit, 5D Mark II I was using back then, and I've zoomed in a fair way, 155 millimeters. There's a cute little sheep in a shelter made for the sheep, um, and it's a colorful landscape, but really, it's not a terribly evocative scene from my point of view. And it's giving an indication of the landscape, but do I want to make a kind of candid image of um, the sheep and lose the landscape in the process? Because I wasn't able to get closer, you see. And, um, for instance, use a wide-angle lens up close. So zooming in, I feel, has robbed me of a lot of the atmosphere of the landscape, of the environment. So here's the alternative view. Standing in the same place. So we've still got our sheep shelter, but really the, the landscape to me was about texture and shape and tonality. So the colour, I would argue, got in the way. Because what you see first is probably green, maybe green and orange, and then you might see the sheep. But you're not seeing the texture, the shapes, the tonality. 
and um, that's much better expressed in the image. Of, this image, I feel, I was limited by uh, twenty four one hundred five. That that you know twenty four mil focal length on the full frame Canon five D Mark II was the widest uh, focal length I had back then, and I would have preferred to have got uh, more on the left and right of the image to actually emphasize the shape of the land by having more of the river in the picture but I, I, I just couldn't get it uh, I was on incredibly spongy ground and moving back uh, even just um, a foot you know a third of a meter completely changed the composition there was a barbed wire fence in front of me and you know it just uh, it just didn't work so I had to make the shot like that I would have preferred a little bit more space but actually I think out of the series it's the most interesting image and my point really is that the other images that preceded it were important to get me to this particular point creatively. And I often run into people who, are for, who forget they're using a digital camera. You know, they forget that it doesn't cost them anything to push the button and that they make the mistake of thinking things have to be perfect. Well, you know, perfection comes through effort <laughs> uh, and repetition of practice. So you've got to get your eye in, uh, first of all, and the way to do that is just to make pictures. And by making pictures, particularly when you're moving, your brain is stimulated, and so is the eye. Photography is a physical endeavour. And although I use zoom lenses uh, quite a bit these days, I was a very last-minute convert to the zoom lens but I still use them like I would be using a series of fixed focal length lenses or prime lenses. In other words, I say this is a 24mm shot and then I set the uh, focal length to 24mm and if things are too far away, well, I walk closer. People have become lazy and the zoom lens, I think, for most folks is really the death of composition because what you do is you try to compose your image by zooming and you know when it doesn't work because you see people zoom, zoom, zoom all the way in, zoom, zoom, zoom all the way out, and they're backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and it's not working. That's because they're relying too much on the convenience of the zoom lens. If your image is about space and depth, if that's what drew your attention, you need to shoot it on a wide-angle lens, and you would then move backwards or forwards to um, fit things in. If your image is about more two-dimensional aspects, then um, you'd be better to zoom in and then move forwards or backwards if need be. I think that's really essential. Of course, if there's a crocodile in the way, that might affect your approach uh, as far as movement goes. But I think the concept is really critical, actually. I think there's three things also to consider, that the lens focal length, wide angle or zoom, as I say, is so important to what you're able to express in your pictures. And the lens focal length goes along with perspective and with the camera to subject distance. Those things are crucial in the way we produce our images and the final result we arrive at. And those things are all affected by a physical approach. Photography is a physical endeavor and we need to move to improve our composition, to stimulate our brains and through there our own creativity. So, you know, the short series of images I've shown was approached so that by the end of the series I would arrive at an image I was happy with and this is it. So I hope that's of use to you folks. I appreciate your attention and I look forward to sharing some information with you soon. This is Glenn Guy at the Arcanum. Bye for now.